All right, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. And to add on to more of the machine videos we've been making, let's talk about what coil machine materials are used and what's the pros and cons of them. All right. All right, now that that's over with, machine material. Now you can make a machine out of anything. I found machines made out of plastic, which is just weird. So I'm gonna go with the most commonly used machines, materials that we see out there in public. Um, and let's just discuss what, what's the pros and cons of these ones, right? They're brass, aluminum, steel, and iron. Yeah, it's pretty simple, right? They're all hard, they're metals, but each one of them is gonna have a different performance characteristic when they're actually using the quill machine. Now, the first one we're gonna go down to is the weight, right? With the weight, when we're doing this, brass is always the heaviest stuff that you can get. It's just deep, heavy, dense, you know. <laughs> the density of it actually is really great because the heavier that the machine is on average, at least just the frame materials, the better it is at absorbing any of those vibrations that you have on it. So while brass is the heaviest, right, it also it, like, lacks a lot of vibration. Vibration. It's kind of cool. It's also extremely expensive in comparison with other things nowadays, right? So we'll do the $3 signs on that one. It's very expensive to get brass. But when you can get a good brass machine that's been manufactured you know, by a quality builder, they last forever. And since it has the decreased amount of vibrations that are going on to it, you'll actually save some money in the long run because like your springs aren't going to be undergoing the same amount of vibrational stress just past the flex that are going on them. So on average, those materials seem to last longer. Same with your coils, capacitor, everything else just has a better insulation. So it doesn't experience the same amount of, you know, environmental stresses that causes it to break down. So simple, easy, good, right? Next one, aluminum. Aluminum is cheap. It's so easy to go out and get an aluminum frame made. I mean, you can go to any machine shop, give them a chunk of aluminum, say here, you know, just like CNC this, and it's just quick as all hell. Uh, there's different grades of aluminum, of course, but in general, aluminum is always gonna have very heavy vibration. These are the machines when you first start out and you're using them, your fingers go numb, and then after you've been tattooing like five hours, every time you touch your finger together, it feels like it's being electrocuted. That's an aluminum frame. <laughs> but if you don't mind the vibration, maybe you have some good insulation on your actual tube grip, something like that. Um, they, uh, they're very light. So I've seen a lot of people who are maybe like smaller in stature, they just don't have the musculature to hold some of the heavier machines like a brass machine. We'll give them an aluminum machine and they can just zip right along. Now, the sounds and tones off this, brass is deep, it's throaty. You hear, right? Aluminum is zippy as all hell. This stuff will make your ears ring, especially if you have multiple aluminum shot, um, machines that are running in the shop at the same time, you'll get this weird dissonance that's just like going throughout the entire shop. And it, it can be annoying to some or relaxing to others. I, I worked in the shop with like 10 people that were all tattooing at the same time every day that we were in there. And, and you know, we had a couple people that used aluminum frames exclusively. And oh my gosh, it was just like cathartic. I could just sit up and just like fall asleep <laughs> listening to everyone working. That's just me. I've been doing this a long time. So maybe my ideas behind this are just different. So last two, steel and iron. Now we have another thing that we, we hadn't talked about with these two that we have to worry about with these specifically because they're ferrous materials, right? These two can be magnetized. Now, if you're running an electromagnet next to a piece of metal for a long period of time, it will become polarized. It will actually grab a magnetic charge. So it's something to notice with these ones is that they're kind of in between with everything else, right? Steel and iron machines, iron is usually, I mean, in comparison with aluminum, it's really cheap because you can find scrap. Like that's where you see people making them out of like old horseshoes or doorbell knockers or what, you know, whatever. And so you can get this relatively cheap, but cleaning iron <laughs> with modern chemicals is, is not too good, right? If you use like uh, mattiside or Cavicide on iron and steel if they aren't you know coated lacquered you know powder coated whatever um, they will rust very quickly 
So, especially like even with the, the coil cores, we have iron cores versus steel cores, they tend to really get roughed up pretty quick. So the lifespan on the iron stuff, depending on how you use your cleaning materials and stuff like this, is usually going to be the, the shortest lived. And I say that not like it'll last. I'd be like, oh, Ryan, there's iron machines from back in Syria, Luger. Yeah, I know, it's fine. But you got to pull those fucking things apart all the time. So I'm, I'm saying shortest live in your, in your wheelhouse if you're a clean tattooer, okay? You have to pull that thing apart every time and like get nooks and crannies and clean it and do it. It's just time consuming as all hell. So I, I, I don't know, I'm kind of biased against iron machines. I love them, I think they're great. I love the sound an iron machine makes, but my God, man, the amount of cleaning you have to do is just nasty with these things. At the same time, this is relatively soft metal in comparison with something like steel, which brass is also very soft. Um, if you have a single piece chuck that's gonna be on them, brass and iron chucks, if they're not designed well by an experienced uh, builder, they tend to break really easily, especially if you're working with different size tube ends, right? You're gonna have to stick something in there, maybe it doesn't fit right, you use a different tube, and you're gonna have to like throw a screwdriver in the end of the chuck and twist it up. I've broken two or three of those um, on some machines that I've owned over the years, and it's aggravating as all hell, which is another reason why I think iron sucks. Um, <laughs> like I said, biased. Magnetization you can deal with. Sorry, just like got off on the thing. Uh, we'll make a video about that, how to like de demagnetize your actual machine. You can degauss it, you know, if you want to, but buying and setting up a degaussing machine is kind of expensive. So there's another trick. There's a, one thing we used to do is just throw it, hit the wall, it seemed to work. Uh, <laughs> So steel is gonna be the last one we go over. Steel is middle of the road, standard, easy to get stuff. It's usually not too expensive, but sometimes it can be. I mean, since some of those Russian dudes building these things and they're charging like $1,000 for machines, it's fucking wild. Um, they're mid-weight, right? So they're kind of like our all-arounders and they have pretty decent um, vibration insulation, which like iron and brass are, are always the best. Like brass is the best on iron, steel than aluminum. Um, yeah. That's mid-range, vibration, absorption. Ah, whatever. Um, so yeah, so that, that's a breakdown of why these things are gonna be the way that they are and why we use them, right? Um, it always comes down to personal preference. If you're somebody who really likes lightweight, try to stick with something that's like steel or aluminum. If you don't care and you've got big meaty muscles or something, iron and brass machines go well. And uh, each one of them is gonna have, you know, a different lifetime. Like realistically, the aluminum machines are the ones that aren't gonna last the longest. The, the amount of vibration that they actually exert on themselves through operation can break rear posts, side plates, it can break and fracture the actual base for where your you know coils are attached to. So but I mean, at the same time, it's going to be dependent on who's using it, how it's set up, how it's run. I know everyone's going to be like, oh, I know of an aluminum machine from 19, you know, 47. That's, I'm just saying that everything you're going to buy, like you go on eBay and buy a machine. There you go. That's what you're going to end up with. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's it for today. If you have any other questions you think we should cover different types of materials, let us know in the comments. Past that, thanks for watching. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.